My name is Bernie Burns, and I am the founder and the creative director of Rooster Teeth. We are a company based out of Austin, Texas. We've been making online video since 2003, at least in the current form of online video. We were making little shorts uh, before that, going all the way back to 1999. But Hank asked me to come out and talk to you all today because we share some very common beliefs about audience and community building. And while you're here at VidCon, especially on the business portion, you're going to hear a lot of talk about big numbers and scale. Some of them will be really cool, like George's announcement they're going to be investing $10 million in creator content. That is really, really awesome, um, especially considering that YouTube invested $100 million just a few years ago. That's, that's a huge milestone for the industry. But you're going to hear a lot of big numbers. And for people that are starting out, which I imagine a lot of you are, show of hands, how many of you guys are content creators? How many of you? That's pretty much, that's right in line with what George said, about 77% of you. Yeah, it can be a little daunting to hear those big numbers. Uh, and I'm proud of the scale that we have at Rooster Teeth. Uh, I'm proud of the big numbers that we have. You know, and I'll just blaze through some of them really quickly. We were the number four most watched channel. Our owned and operated Rooster Teeth channel was number four on YouTube last year. Uh, you know, we had the longest running web series with Red versus Blue in the history of the internet. Uh, we have 12.3 million subscribers across our owned and operated channels, not including some of our very modest MCN network that we have, some of our uh, partners we have there. Uh, we have over 3.2 billion YouTube views just on our one channel, Rooster Teeth. Uh, 500,000 average uh, views per video that we put up on our Let's Play channel. Uh, and then we have a great podcast as well that does great on iTunes. Uh, and then we also have, uh, next weekend, as a matter of fact, our own live event down in Austin. It's called RTX. It's a gaming and internet convention. Uh, it's going to have 30,000 attendees this year. So we have big numbers, and I'm really proud of that. I realize that there are very few people that have the scale uh, that Rooster Teeth does, and I'm very appreciative of that. But if you look at just subscriber counts and you look at just view numbers, you're not looking at the full story for anybody who's making content online. And I think that the big secret for online success, certainly it's helped Rooster Teeth over its last decade of existence, is engagement with the audience and community building. And engagement, engagement can be a thing that's really hard to quantify because it doesn't show up on a spreadsheet anywhere. Uh, George was talking about Back to the Future. Let me use Star Wars as an example. I can talk to my kids and I can tell them about how big Star Wars is. They're playing with the same toys that I played with when I was seven years old, now that they're seven years old. 30 years that franchise has spanned, uh, you know, countless franchises that have come and gone in the meantime. And you can look and I can explain to them how big it is. I can show them box office mojo and say, this is how much money this sequel made versus this one. There's no line on the spreadsheet that will tell how many people camped out to wait for Return of the Jedi. There's no metric for that. That's a level of engagement that you just, you can't quantify it, but you know it when you see it. And that's the important thing about engagement, is you have to try things. You can't be told how to do it, but you'll know it when you see it. Let me give you an example from my own personal history. In 2003, uh, I came up with an idea for animation using video games called Machinima. Machinima with a little m, not the big M like the company. Um, and I got together some of my friends, and we launched what is now the longest running web series in the history of the internet, Red vs. Blue. Put it online. Thank you. The, uh, the show is now in its 12th season, uh, but it started in a spare bedroom in my house with zero views, the way everything starts. I got my friends together, wrote some scripts, recorded some dialogue, put together a team, got the animation done in about a week and a half, and put the first episode online. And if you guys are content creators, you know what that's like. You post something and you wait. And, and back then there was no YouTube, so we didn't have a view counter. We just had a hit counter on our web page. So we saw one hit come in. We we're like, this is it. We have expectations for how well this is going to do. We're making content. We're delivering it directly to the internet. How is this going to work for us? What's going to happen? So we waited. We're waiting for that comment. Are we going to get a comment? Are we going to get a comment? And we did. Here comes a comment. This is our first initial contact with the audience. What do they want to say? First post. God damn it. And the story of Red vs. Blue in those early days is a fun discussion. It really is, because we went from 3,000 views in the first week to getting linked on just about every site that was big in 2003. We had 250,000 views on the second episode. By the end of the month, we were doing a million a month, a million a month. So it was crazy growth. It was like falling up a cliff. It was incredible. But these jackasses with the first posts were there every week. 
And they went from one person with first post to 10 people trying to get first post, and then 20 people trying to get first post. And I sat down, I looked at it, and I said, you know, there's something to this. And we have a problem on our hands because in those days, there was no YouTube. So if we got a ton of hits, we actually got a bill for $12,000 from our co-location facility to serve all these videos. So we were like, yay, then the bill came in, we were like, shit, that's terrible. It's pro they call it in business the problem you want to have. But uh, when you've got it, you have to figure out a way to deal with it. So we looked at it, and that's the first lesson of engagement, I think, is that engagement, the audience will cue you on it, but it's up to you as a creator to start that first step of engagement. So we actually started from this, what I call the economy of first. Our first steps at monetization and turning Rooster Teeth into a real business were to have premium subscriptions. Like I said, there was no YouTube. There was no ad truck that just showed up at the front door when you had a viral hit. That didn't happen. And so we started premium subscriptions that gave people early access to things. Uh, we then started offering t-shirts, and that cascaded into a premium level of membership uh, that was part of Rooster Teeth that really got us through those early years before the infrastructure kind of built up all around us for online video. And it really wasn't like a luxury or a privilege, it was just our first steps of telling the audience, we get it. We, we get what you guys are interested in, and the audience is telling you exactly what they want. There's a lot of people out there that will say, don't read the comments, don't read the comments. I say read the comments twice. It is a rare privilege in the history of entertainment to have constant feedback from your audience. Sometimes you'll get a second by second breakdown what they think about your content. And there, for years, people spent millions of dollars trying to figure out how people consumed entertainment. That's where the Nielsen ratings come from. People are handing this to you, so read the comments. I'm gonna jump a little bit ahead in the history of Rooster Teeth, uh, talk a little bit more about the engagement. When we saw that first post, it took us a few weeks, but when we finally figured it out we saw that these people wanted to engage and they wanted to engage on some level, then we got it. We saw it, we knew it when we saw it. Same thing with Ruby, one of the shows we've launched in the last couple years. And Rooster Teeth has now about 40 different shows in production. We have about 85 employees, starting from that one person working in a spare bedroom of his house. We now have a 50,000 square foot soundstage uh, with 80 employees working there. And in the last couple years, Ruby is an anime show that we've been putting out. Red vs. Blue was always at conventions where we would meet with fans as part of our engagement strategy, and we always saw that the anime conventions that we went to, because Red vs. Blue was this weird fit, we never really knew where it should be shown. It should be a video game convention, it should be an anime convention. But the anime conventions, we saw people just wandering around. Cosplay was not quite what it is today, but at anime conventions, it was huge. Pe people were so engaged with these properties. They were unabashedly enthusiastic about the things that they like, and that is so appealing to me. When someone just doesn't care, they say, I love this thing and I'm gonna celebrate it. So, when one of our animators had an idea for a new anime show, we said, let's do it. And there's a lot of numbers that go along with this as well. Uh, Ruby has been a huge hit. Uh, it's been number two on Crunchyroll, uh, which is, we put it on Crunchyroll because that's the primary destination for anime online. Uh, the soundtrack got to number one on iTunes. Uh, beating Hunger Games and Pokemon that week, and it even got to number one in Japan uh, on iTunes, the soundtrack, which was a huge win for us, because we were trying to break in, uh, thank you, with the, into the Asian market the way comedy just can't, can't do that. But all those metrics aside, which we're really proud of, this is the thing that excites me the most. This is a group of cosplayers at KatsuCon, who it's about 30 people all dressing as Ruby characters, the very first season that we had this thing out. The very first season. That was instant engagement. There's nothing more exciting to me than that. And there's nothing with more potential than that. But you know how this would look on a spreadsheet? This would look like 30 DVDs sold. That's exactly what that would look like. I think you guys can recognize it's so much more than that. The engagement is so much more than that. Because you know it when you see it. And our convention, I'm gonna roll this behind me. At our convention at RTX, which takes place next week, we applied that philosophy as well. We said, hey, if we have, you know, at that point in time, 10,000 people coming out to Austin uh, to see us, you guys like our shows, do you wanna be in our shows? So we had this apocalyptic show, which is gonna debut this summer. Uh, the vector for our apocalypse is if you fall asleep, you die, uh, because we wanted to have empty streets. And so we invited all the attendees out for RTX Everyone you see on screen here, every person for eight blocks going either direction, 
is an RTX attendee, a Rooster Teeth fan who came out to be in the shoot. It was 1,800 extras. We shot for three hours with them. And as you can see, as the scene progresses and this hallucination advances, everyone falls dead in the street. We had our fans laying in the gutter for about two and a half hours. <laughs> and they absolutely loved it. And they had a blast. And they're going to go home to their towns where they came from, and they're going to be evangelical about this piece. They won't be able to wait for it. They're going to tell their friends about it. They can be in it. This whole shot, if I was shooting this in LA, this would pr I can't even imagine how much this shot would cost me to close streets and get 1,800 extras. In Austin, Texas, uh, with our own audience and our own community contributing to it, this entire shot cost us about $2,000 total which is unbelievable. We've centered the whole show, basically, the whole series of leading up to key moments where this is a part of. Spoiler alert, I probably should have said that at the beginning, though. <laughs> but this is great. I mean, this goes to show for us the next level of engagement, the way that as we scale up that engagement, as our audience grows, they want to become more involved. And we're constantly trying to find newer and bigger opportunities for them to do that. And no matter what level you're at, you can always make an effort to engage with your audience, whether you get in the comments, whether you collaborate directly with your audience, uh, whether you have them contribute to the, the show through art or whatever you know, their particular aptitude might be, there's always an opportunity for it. And I want to leave you with one thing. Like I said, there is a, uh, there's going to hear a lot of big numbers this week, and these, these can be daunting. But I want to leave you with how these things work in scale. Uh, and you can see, you know, hopefully take some inspiration from this. Honestly, this month, this is currently the big story at Rooster Teeth. This month, we launched our Indiegogo campaign, our crowdfunding campaign for our first feature. It's something that I have wanted to do for years, uh, since I even started Rooster Teeth. And me and my production partner, Matt Hullum, we, it was always something where it's like, it's always two years away. You know, we can get this budget to this level, and we can do that. It's always going to be the project after our next project. And we finally said, look, there's a lot of opportunities out there with crowdfunding. Why don't we put it out to our audience and see if, instead of two years from now, we can do it this year. Within 10 hours, we beat our goal of $650,000 raised. Uh, and Indiegogo said that was the fastest they've ever had a film get funded on their site. Within 48 hours, uh, we hit a million dollars raised. And this is all from crowdfunding contributions. Uh, we now stand at $1.7 million with about 12 days left. We're on our way. Thank you. I appreciate that. It gets better. Uh, we are on our way to becoming the number one film funded on Indiegogo, and will be the number one film uh, funded that is going to be based on an original IP, not a reboot and not a sequel. So we're really looking forward to that. I mean, we passed a project by Spike Lee, Adam Carolla, uh, Will Wheaton. We just passed uh, season three of Tabletop, um, who did had an amazing crowdfunding campaign. Um, so this is all great. But it's, it's wrong. To look at these numbers and talk about that, to look at that $1.7 million, that's an enormous number. And I have a huge appreciation for it. That's, that's not where you should be looking. And it's just like views, and it's just like subscriber counts, which you're going to hear said a thousand times this weekend. That's not where you need to be looking. You need to look past that. Find where the engagement is. I can show you exactly where it is. It's right there. Funders, 25,000. 25,000 people got us to the level 1.7 million dollars. When we hit 1 million dollars in 48 hours, that was 12,000 people. 12,000 people is what got us to where we were shattering records. They were shattering records on our behalf. 12,000 people. If you're just starting out today, this is the power of engagement. If you're starting out with nothing, you can get 1,000 fans. You can do that. You can get in your forum posts. You can get in your comments, you can talk to people, you can foster that discussion, you can get to 1,000. If you can get to 1,000, you can get to 2,000. You're not that far off. This is the number. 25,000 people got us to $1.7 million. 25,000 people out of 12 million subs. 25,000 people are pushing the next generation of content at Rooster Teeth. I challenge you. The rest of the weekend you're here, go to panels at VidCon, go to speeches and keynotes, see if anybody ever talks about 25,000 people. If we uploaded the video to YouTube and it got 25,000 views on it, we would assume that there was something technically wrong with it and we would re-upload it. This is an industry where we talk about tens of millions of subscribers, 
billions of views. People talk about these numbers like they make sense and they're logical numbers or throwaway values. 25,000 people are pushing it. You know it when you see it. I'm Bernie Burns. Thanks for 10 minutes.